Hi, it's me, Burbingish, and before we start, we have to set a few precedents. We are going to be using American laws for the video, and if you're wondering why, take a look at the details around the map, like the uh, McGurger and, you know, the architecture. Deep Woken is clearly set in the United States. We're going to be having our buddy Cop Paul gather evidence for us. He's going to play through the game, defeating every boss once, so that we don't have any time loop shenanigans, no chasers. He's gonna play through the game, defeating every boss once, so that we don't have any time loop shenanigans, no chaser stuff, and that we have something comprehensible at the end of the video, instead of like, you know, a Googleplex years in prison, or until Conquest releases. First on the chopping block is the Duke of Aresia. In case you don't touch the lore, Duke is a guy who lived in the city of Seltor before it decided to take a swim, forcing him to move to some random island now known as Aresia. And since he isn't a great swimmer, he uh, wanted to discourage Aresia from taking a dip like his uh, big brother Seltor. And he was gonna do this with some song-fueled shenanigans, namely the Forge of Sin, because nothing could possibly go wrong with using something like that. Oh, he's evil now. So after his little attitude change, he made a bunch of these mindless servants out of the citizens in his nation which is probably illegal, unless you're the CIA. Of course, after hearing about these shenanigans and being the great guy that he is, the Etrian Police Department head, Lord Regent, sent Cop Paul over to investigate. Hello everybody and welcome to Cop Paul's Police Pursuits. Today we're going to be pursuing Duke of Aresia. So that's his house right over there and I got my warrant right here. He's been allegedly brainwashing people, that's what the Lord Regent told me. So we're going to go in there and we're going to teach him a lesson with our, um, of the standard issue. What is this, repeater? Alright, let's go. Alright, right off the bat, we spot two brain suckers. According to California's penal code 399.5, it is illegal to own a dog that is trained to fight or kill, even if it's for home defense. I'm not quite sure what the regulations are for giant flying bat monsters, but if you squint your eyes, it kind of looks like a chihuahua, so we're just gonna count it as a dog. So that's two cases of owning combat trained dogs, and these count for felonies. Also, it is a good time to mention that I am not a lawyer, and you should not take legal advice from Roblox videos on the internet. Now here comes the tricky part. Our brave hero, Cop Paul, encounters three of the rumored mindless servants. There's not really a close parallel to this in real life, so it was a bit hard pinning this down as a charge. I decided to do some research about brainwashing on the internet, you know, about the laws and whatnot. And uh, the most of the information was about how it's implausible and won't hold up in court or, you know, the CIA trying to do it. So instead of looking into an obscure topic of law that, like, most lawyers don't even treat seriously. I'm just gonna call the Duke a mob boss and the mindless servants as goons, which means that under the RICO Act of 1970 makes it so that all the crimes his servants commit is charged to him as well. So since they're punching me, I mean Ka Paul in the face, that's like three charges of assault right there. Along with like one more, two more like combat dog trains charges because there's like more bats in the next room. By the way, assaults are punishable for up to 6 months in jail and up to a thousand dollars. And this is just the first room by the way, time for the next room. And wow, he, he just quadrupled our previous numbers. That's like 6 more charges of assault, 6 more charges of like the dog charge, whatever it's called, the owning dog strain to kill one, and a housing code violation because he doesn't have a smoke detector. And I'm just gonna ignore the elevator that's the size of a small apartment because I don't wanna you know, spend hours researching laws about elevator safety. I'm sure whoever made this elevator didn't either, so. Moving on, we get to the dungeon, finally. And of course, we have more mindless servants, but now we also have golems, and they're a, they're a bit of a tough one. Do we count them as dogs like the brain suckers? Because dogs don't shoot lasers out of their chest unless they're from Boston. But they also aren't human at all, because, you know, they're a rock golem. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine together all the previous cases and classify the golems as pet dogs trained to kill and injure that are in possessions of firearms that are also working for the duke as goons. Trust me, this is a very legitimate charge and I am not making it up. Owning an unregistered firearm is a felony, but according to California Penal Code 25850C6, the firearm has to be in a public place for them to actually be uh, charged and prosecuted. And since we are in the Duke's house, it is private property, and therefore he gets to, you know, go off scot-free with his fancy chest lasers. But, what about the ones outside of the manor? If you look around Upper Aresia, you can see a bunch of stationary golems scattered all about the place, as well as some regular golems. And uh, at this point, Cop Paul doesn't feel like uh, counting every single turret golem and golem in Upper Aresia. 
and by Kapo I mean me, so we're just gonna we're just gonna give the Duke like 15 cases of illegal deployment of remote auto turrets and like 10 cases of more owning killer dogs with guns working as goons. I can't seem to find a precedent case for like the turrets. It was like who's smart enough to make automatic tracking turrets, but dumb enough to get caught using them. But we're just gonna uh, we're just gonna give him like a felony and or 10 years in jail for each turret that he has. All right, great. One more corridor where we add a couple more bats and golems to count, specifically two more bats and two more golems. And now we're finally at the boss fight. First, we see a bunch of servants in tubes and he uses them throughout the boss fight. So we're just gonna add those to the count. And now time for Cop Paul to take over. Hello, sir. This is my uh, warrant right here for your arrest. And uh, we're gonna be confiscating that big orb looking thing. Okay, so I don't think he wants to. Five minutes later. There we go, and Duke is dead. Well, not dead, he's knocked out. Okay, so at this point, I was about to grip the Duke, but then I realized, as a law-abiding police officer, we have to consider whether gripping the Duke is even legal. Because in the US, it's legal for an officer to use deadly force when they feel threatened. But the Duke isn't exactly in a fighting shape right now, so we can't kill him. Normally, he would be arrested and brought back. However, it appears that somebody has spread butter on my hands, and I can't pick him up. So I'm just gonna have to... Uh, think of something else. But in total, Duke has 4 cases of owning killer dogs with guns working as goons on his property, 10 cases of owning uh, killer dogs with guns working as goons in public, 25 cases of assault, 1 case of attempted homicide, 1 case of resisting arrest, 15 counts of deployment of turrets on public property, well, I'm pretty sure they're illegal on private property anyways, and a fine for not having a smoke detector. If you're wondering how much this is in terms of a sentence, well, uh, details are usually determined by the judge case by case, and it can, uh, well, for this case, it can vary from 50 years to 16 life sentences and, like, 900 years in prison, along with, like, a 25.5k in fines. And I would just like to say, uh, with all the places I'm getting my law info from and, like, <laughs> my ability to fumble simple mathematics, th these numbers are probably not accurate, but, you know, unless somebody decides to do all this in real life, we'll never know. So I'm just going to be giving the Duke a final sentence of 10 life sentences in jail, 800 years in prison, and 100 matches of Chime of Conflict. But, but, as you may remember, Duke was influenced by the Forge of Sin, and in the US, you can plead for insanity if you want to escape charges. So if Duke, or Duke's lawyer, was able to prove the powers of the Forge was corrupting him, he would be able to get off scot-free. But you know, he'd, he'd probably be put in like an asylum or something. Plus, he would miss out on the opportunity to go meet Drake. So I'm not sure that's still like a perfect solution. Well anyways, that's gonna be the end of this video. I didn't expect one character to take so long, so if you guys like this video, I might make sequels covering the other characters. But, uh, we'll just see. Thank you for watching all the way through, and uh, yeah, bye bye.